Hey y'all, grown black folks talk. Uh, a little, a thought about defeat and victory to start out this last week of October and first week of November overlap as we go into the second half of the autumn this next week. And it's going to be a different kind of space because pretty soon you're going to see my videos about um, having started, you know, the free book launch for Season the Crypto Bull Run for Financial Freedom goes out free. And also on that same day, the Season the Crypto Bull uh, Run newsletter will be in the ninth chapter of the book as well. And I'm going to have that live for you also on the same day. We'll talk about that more next week. Because like I said, um, it's not always helpful to um, always be showing how easy it looks and to see the end result. You need to know that you can get through this in your full humanity. And that's going to be a different video. But as I was in this mode of putting the finishing touches on this to make sure I have time to review the draft and make sure it looks the way it needs to look before you see it. I thought to myself, I watched a video by Yvette Carnell that reminded me of something we talked about with Noir Aunties. If you missed yesterday's Noir Aunties, you'll find that on Confidence with Love's channel. I'll link to it in the description. I don't always agree with Yvette Carnell, Breaking Brown. But the thing about Yvette Carnell, if you're going to disagree with her, honestly, you got to do work. Because she brings receipts and research and has read up, like Confidence Love talks about having read up. She talks a lot about having read up. And with her having talked about having read up, if you're going to disagree with her substantially, you're going to have to do the research to make that happen. <sighs> I'm blessed to have done enough research over the course of my life to be able to stand on certain things. But it's not that much, actually. Uh, we disagree more on approach than anything else. We see a lot of the same thing. She was discussing a particular issue, which I cannot go into here because it's too complex and the individuals who are involved with this are a little bit too revered for me to bring that argument over. And she said, I agree with them almost. I agree with them almost, but this is where the problem comes. You can't tell me that they have everything, but we're 100% responsible to solve the problem. That means you don't understand either one or the other. So a concession that your opponent has control of everything and that Black young people don't have a chance is a concession of defeat. If you are defeated, you then cannot be responsible for victory because you already conceded the position. And what struck me was the number of Black men who called in to defend the personage who made that statement. And so I listened to this and I listened to Ms. Carnell have to respectfully but firmly let folk know, no, 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 you do not have the research. You have not done the work. But what they were mainly interested in, if they came in late, look, I came in late, but uh, did you at least acknowledge that the brother did this and that? Like she said, you were very late because I did all that at the beginning. But see, unfortunately, this is defeated behavior. Confidence with Love and I yesterday also talked about a species of defeated behavior. Because you have Black women who think that their bread is going to be buttered going along with Black men who are trying to find excuses to brutalize Black women. 18 to 2100 times a year. Because Confidence with Love's new figures say that Black women are being murked six times a day by Black men, not five. If this is indeed the case, now the number is six times 365, not five. Five gets you to about 1,800. Six gets you closer to 2,100, over 2,000, well over. And, and actually darn near 2,200 because six times 365 is 2,195. Uh, 2,190, correction. My my brain just went on and did that math <laughs> that I really didn't want to do. But yeah, darn near 2,200. So that also is behavior of defeated women. So I thought about these two shows, one of which I was on, the other was listening to. And I thought to myself, if you believe that you're defeated, you are. 
uh, Confucius said that a long time ago. Very rarely is a Christian going to go Confucius, but truth is true. Um, the Bible says very clearly, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you believe you're defeated, you are. And we'll talk later about what happens next. And I'm going to use the two most famous generals of the Civil War to illustrate the two points I'm making here. So, Confucius said sometime later, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. You're right. And a lot of this argument that goes on between why are black men out there destroying black men over a piece of property, a block areas that they do not own in order to obtain a jail cell in which they will become chattel again. Why are black men out here competing with black men, competing with black women instead of competing that hard with other men? and being angry that we're going to college and we're getting college educated level jobs and we have money and can do things as free people for ourselves. Why are black women out here competing with other black women for these men? This is the behavior of people who have conceded that freedom is not possible and they have been defeated. That's what's going on. And if you believe you are defeated, you are. Congratulations, you're right. But see what you don't get to do? is to then take me or anyone I'm concerned with with you. See, being defeated law, it's like the, the the second shooter in the main case. My mom and my grandma, my grandmother lived long enough to get into the age of mass shooting, to live to be 95, from when you know mass lynchings were a thing, to have lived long enough to see the violence that America did against Black people become, and, and Native Americans and Latinos and Asians become the lot of even white children. That's a whole nother video and not a popular one to do, but not today. It's not a discussion at hand. My mother and my grandmother have always said the same thing. Uh, why didn't the man just do that first and stop killing all these other innocent people? And see, this is the thing. It's not enough for people because Tom Sims of Love and I talked about narcissism, narcissism, sociopathy, and psychopathy. We, we, that may not, those last two may not be words, but we're just going to talk about the state of being a sociopath and a uh, psychopath. It's not enough for the psychopath to go alone. The narcissist also does not want to go without his or her supply. So what they do is they drag other people down with them, which is why you have to remove all three of those from your life. The people on the higher end of the sociopathic and psychopathic area, the sociopath will kill you because the psychopath will enjoy it and enjoy telling other people about what they did. But all of those people will destroy you. They, because of the black hole in their soul, feel that life is not going to offer them anything by their own resources. They don't have anything to bring to the table. So all they can do is pull other people down. This is the issue and the conflict at bottom. Ebony K. Williams is 40. She will never be an 18 to 25 year old black woman again. So she's telling people to do what she should have done if she believes what she's saying at 18 to 25 and gotten her missus degree. Apparently it didn't work for her. So now she's pushing that off on the next generation. Tyler Perry was homeless pursuing his dream at that time. So he thinks black women should take in black men with a dream who can pay a light bill and take her to dinner a couple times. What they're doing is they're projecting on the next generation their defeat at that time at their lives. And because this defeat is still lodged in their soul despite their later success, now they want to project that on someone else. Tyler Perry decided to be a single father by a surrogate mother, meaning he is, is defeated in the idea of thinking he would ever make a good husband and father. Ebony Williams is single. She even got left by the white man because she couldn't understand how he might want to spend more time with the family that he had than her, not knowing how long that pandemic was going to go. And see, we covered for Ebony. We went hard for Ebony. But then she came out and had decided to act full. Well, guess what? Since you, what was the Bible said, uncover your nakedness, then we're just going to have to go ahead and call it what it is. Because again, there is a concession to defeat by saying that black women have no chance at marriage 
uh, unless they get it done before they leave college. Ebony K. Williams is just telling you she's given up subconsciously. And this is the thing. If you believe you're defeated, you are. But you don't get to drag anyone else down. If you believe you can win in a free in a world in which you do have common grace and a free will, at least on a temporal level, you can. We're going to talk about what you do when you surrender in a minute. But let me deal with this. Since some of my divestment and hypergamy sisters think a white man is the answer, and since black men are letting themselves get caught out here online wishing they were white because so they could get away with the things white men get away with, let me give you the story of U.S. Grant called unconditional surrender because that's almost what he got. Not quite. We'll get into that in a minute. Ulysses S. Grant. He didn't like his first name. His first name was Hiram. But when he went to West Point, he liked his nickname, Ulysses, better. So he became Ulysses Samuel Grant. He's like, I'm not going to even be defeated by the name my mama gave me. The Civil War should have been over in 1862. The general who was standing on the exact same spot as him, eight miles from the Confederate capital, was a general whose name you probably never heard unless I mentioned it on this channel, General George McClellan. George McClellan got within eight miles of Richmond. He outnumbered his opponent, J.J. Johnston of the Confederate Army, almost two to one when he arrived. But J.J. Johnston got shot in the neck. His replacement lost six of the next seven battles and still ran McClellan out of the state. Because that wily old man managed to convince McClellan that he had 200,000 men, twice as many men as McClellan, and then backed up the bluff by attacking first, even though he didn't have men to pull any of that off. McClellan turned tail and ran back to Washington. Run out by Robert Edward Lee Sr., who would proceed to be outnumbered and outgunned for the rest of the Civil War. If McClellan could have gotten his life together and not be scared and not believe he was defeated and sat there waiting on reinforcements, okay, you get 30,000 reinforcements, but so does Lee. In reality, your truth trade hasn't changed. He gets 30,000, you get 30,000. But you look there, old man, he's just like, oh, he's still scared. All right, if you're scared, let, let, let me show you why he really should be scared of me. All right, bet. You got to see that with the white hair and the patrician look. I'm quite sure it never occurred to him to say, I bet. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> got ran and made out of Richmond. And Lee was outnumbered and outgunned for the rest of the war. He should have lost at least five times. Instead, he ran five generals plum crazy. None of them should have been defeated by him ever. If McClellan gets to Richmond, 500,000 lives are saved. Black people are free in 1863. But he thought he was outnumbered, outgunned, and defeated. And Lee ran him out of town. Hope, you don't know his name either. He got up there next and got fired because he didn't believe anybody would split his army when he was that outnumbered. It's not possible. His own general was like, but he's right over there. Nope. Got smashed. They put McCullen back in at the Battle of Antietam. You come up here with 80,000 men. Your opponent comes up with 40,000 men. You, you, all you got to do is get behind him and he can't get back home. At the end of the battle, you still have 70,000 men. He has 28,000 men and he still escapes you and outruns you back to Virginia. And gets fired again. Burnside ends up marching himself into the Manoa. Wait, hold on. What what order are these people coming? Names you've never heard. Uh Burnside, that's right. He goes and bullies Fredericksburg, which only has 80 men guarding it. Union Army took all the things that weren't nailed down. Robert E. Lee came down there blazing mad with 48,000 men, got up on every hillside of these people and absolutely destroyed them. Did I mention 80,000 troops versus 48,000 troops? And absolutely destroyed them. Because, you know, it's a real coward picking on women and children, but when it comes to actually doing the fighting, mm -hmm. all right, because again, you're scared. You're bullied. You're you going to go ahead and bully some women and children, but you don't know what to do when the men arrive? Oh, okay. All right. 
Burnside's come back. He decides to try to do the mud march. He gets his courage up in, in, in the wintertime. It's raining and snowing. And Robert E. Lee's just sitting here like, please come across. Please come over here. Because all we're going to do is let you get stuck in that mud. And I'm going to put you off into that Potomac. And this boy is going to be done. Fortunately, two of Burnside's under generals went to Abraham Lincoln and said, if you don't fire him, we about to lose the whole thing. Lincoln fired him and Lee was like, God, God, I almost got him. I'm sure Robert E. Lee never said that either. <laughs> it, 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 hook up. He ain't going to sit up here talking about, God have mercy on Lee because I won't. And Robert E. Lee's like, oh, okay, you okay. Come on, come on. Comes on down here, has an army twice as big, marches them into the middle of the battlefield and leaves them there. And Lee's like, oh, you too scared to attack? You have 115,000 men to my 50. Let me get all, all three sides of you real quick and send you home. Gettysburg. Lee lost Gettysburg. But the next day was July 4th and, and General Meade decided his people needed rest and maybe they even had a picnic. Lee said, oh, you need a rest? Okay. It's a full moon. Boys, we out. Out ran them. All the way back to Virginia, and the war would go on another year and a half. Actually, a year and three quarters. And finally, Grant came along and said, Oh, wait, wait, I have two to his one. And because he can't replace his men, I'm going to have three to his one. Oh, no, we ain't going to do this. Because Grant did not believe he was defeated. See? And Lee said about it, Grant has an iron will. I know it. He and I served together in the Mexican-American War in the 1840s. I know it. If we don't kill him, he going to Richmond because he does not believe that he's defeated. Grant can count. If we can't keep him from standing in the spot McClellan was standing in, we're done. We got about five months to do it. And if we can't get him, we're going to lose. He knew that from the minute Grant arrived. And 11 months later, it was done. Grant was general number six, the one Lee couldn't defeat because Grant wasn't believing that he was defeated when he arrived. He told his men, y'all to up here and talk like Lee's going to do a triple somersault like he's Simone Biles or something. Okay, he didn't say that part. But he's going to do a triple somersault and end up on all sides of this army at once. His, his general's that he inherited were all demoralized and had all these stories. But he said, stop it. Don't come in here with any more of this. Let's stop worrying about what Lee's going to do. We're going to focus on what we're going to do. And that is how the war was won. A lot of us as Black people are out here fighting each other because we believe we are defeated. And the only reason we have anything, including the right to not be segregated off computers and off these platforms, do you not know that the computer was invented in 1944? Brown versus Board of Education does not come till 1954. Civil rights is just completed on the books in 1965. And personal computing starts in the 1970s. Do you understand that international business machines was not meant for us to use? Do you understand IBM, for those who need to know what that actually is? Do you understand that if Black people had not believed that they could achieve freedom and that it is our human right, that we wouldn't be able to get up online and act a fool? Because somebody has to understand that if one person has been granted freedom by the creator to think their own thoughts and live their own life, if one human being has, and I'm human, I can too. And whoever it is that's saying I can't is a liar. And the lie will come down. If you don't believe in that, congratulations. You have decided to cut into the lie. And as such, you are the sworn enemy of all those following the truth. Now, there are people who, of course, are in false positions, but are convinced of them. It's not technically a lie in the sense that they're not intentionally lying. There are people who do not have knowledge. But when you are exposed to the truth and you reject it in favor of continuing to hurt 
other people in order to be right and wanting to spread your defeat out, wanting to spew and vomit your defeat out on everybody else to justify your cowardice. Your big fat yellow streak down that black back. See, that's when we're going to have a problem. That's where we're going to have a problem. But let's go to the other side of this for a minute. If you are defeated, what happens next? See, a lot of people think that defeat is the loss of whatever dream they have that failed. But you need to understand that a lot of the dreams that we have been given that failed never came from us anyway. They are a product of the American nightmare, so-called the American dream whereby everybody now is a chattel to these corporate systems. Everybody is working for something that a job will never allow you, not being taught about assets, about capital, and about other ways of doing things in other parts of the world that can work just as well. And about, and, 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 you know, I, I've had no problem with the passport life, being taught the only way to do things is the American way. No, 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 it's not. Now, if you're in Rome, you to a point you have to do what the Romans do. We got a tremendous amount of space here. So it's just like, no, you don't have to be constantly running after the next thing. Sometimes what gets defeated is the lie that you believe. Sometimes the dreams that you have fail because they did not come from a truthful place. Sometimes the dream that you were given was just someone else's fantasy and it's failing because it's supposed to fail. So if you find yourself in that situation, what do you do? This is where we got to go back and pick up old man Lee. General Robert E. Lee, who from his letters from 20 years before this, knew that the time of slavery was coming to an end. But he had married a slave owner's daughter and she was disabled and he had a lot of daughters. So their livelihood depended on the system upholding as long as possible. And that is how he got snooking into doing what he really didn't want to do. What they told him was, you remember how Nat Turner came through here, basically the week that you were married and killed that whole family? Remember how you had to go stop John Brown who was marching down a Harper, Harper Ferry in Virginia, which is not that far from your family? If these Negroes, that's not what was said, get loose with these Northern Vandals, they're going to do the same thing and your family is going to be at risk. And sure enough, the Union Army did come through and take Arlington. Today is Arlington National Cemetery. We don't really have any evidence that they actually would have hurt Robert E. Lee's family because Lee's sons survived being captured and no harm was done to them. We actually don't know that. But we do know that that's one of the motivating factors. He gets on to preserve the cruelest injustice that ever was done in modern history because of the benefits it provided to men like him. But when defeat came, he surrendered and went to work for the rest of his life and supported his family and did not complain because reality came in in the person of General Grant and Lee said, all right, all right, I see it. I see it. I can't do nothing with it. It is what it is. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. He surrendered. It was the only thing left to do because the dream that he had been given was a lie from the beginning of his life. It was a lie when Henry Lee was best friends of George Washington. It was a lie when his grandfather had a plantation. It was a lie when his great-grandfather had a plantation. It was a lie when his great-great-great-grandfather thought that English serfs were no better than chattel to him. Back to the time of Richard the Lionhearted. The Lees have been involved in looking down on the rest of humanity for a long time. However, Robert E. was the last one. He gave it up. He surrendered. And he did the best he could, given the age that he was. That's a late time to be changing your opinion about everything you know. And by no means was he perfect. However, there was an incident before the end of his life. A Black man stumbled into his church in Lexington, Virginia. And those good white Christians around there were about ready to do something to that old man. He had dementia, apparently, because you wouldn't be in your right mind. He just saw a church and wanted to go talk to his God. 
But apparently his God was not good enough for these church members. Robert E. Lee gets to church and realizes what's going to go on and says nothing. He's like, okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to convince them by anything I have to say. He goes down to the altar and kneels down and prays there until that old man gets up and leaves. Because now you got to step over Robert E. Lee to hurt that black man. That stopped the rest of those good white Christians on that day. When Lee surrendered, he surrendered. When he realized what he believed was a lie and, and it not completely, because like I said, he'd already put in 58 years in service to that lie. So his record is by no means perfect. But this is kind of a breaking point for him. Because when he began to surrender, he let letting that go begin to work on him. He only had five years to live. But he let the letting of this lie go work on him. So that he did not participate in any further because we, we, we don't have time to talk about what happened when Lee inherited that plantation. His slaves all decided to walk off and leave his wife there disabled. So let's say that Lee didn't participate in any further crimes against humanity. We'll go that far, okay? It was enough because he recognized this is not God's will for our lives. This was not going to continue. I surrender. He invented the kind of university that produced a journalism major. A journalism major produced the kind of writer that put out Seizing the Crypto Bull Run for Financial Freedom. I was a journalism major. Robert E. Lee, college president of what today is WNL Washington and Lee University, was the first school to have a journalism major. And in fact, his Turning that college into a university is a model for a lot of later 20th century modernizations of sleepy old colleges full of men who did not have to really learn anything because they would have slaves. The fact that the South has a robust college system, of course, we have historical black colleges and universities, but the fact that their white counterparts modernized, Lee got some pretty good work done in the last five years of his life. Once he accepted that the foolishness that he gave 100,000 lives to was to be given up. That's what he had to do. Grant and Lee. If you believe you defeated McCullen, Pope, Hooker, Burnside, you are. If you believe you can win, Grant probably given long enough, you keep at it, you can. When you get beat because what you believe is foolishness, which is why I tell y'all what? Get your lives together. Do you know how it is has been for me to be beat out of 21 months of thinking that people who love foolishness could be pulled out by me? Do you have any idea how painful that is? Three times in 21 months, I have seen what was possible for a great number of people. One of those numbers is now across 20,000. I don't hate anybody who was involved in any of those things. It absolutely and utterly breaks my heart. But see, I had to surrender. Nobody died and made me Jesus. He dies no more forever. He doesn't need me to do his job. I can't save y'all. The Apostle Paul, in a very little quoted portion, because people have this idea that Paul is just this hard-bitten, terrible man. He said, if it were possible to save my people, I would die for them myself, if it could be done. That's the kind of love I have for my my fellow Jews, if it could be done. But he also the same person said, oh, okay, as far as you don't count yourselves worthy of the salvation in Christ, we can, I'm going to go talk to the Gentiles. Bye. Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians, all, all, all these different Asians and Europeans. Philip had talked to the Ethiopian eunuch. Problem solved. Because he went back to the Kanjaji 
and showed her how that fit with how the Queen of Sheba had found out certain things during the time of Solomon and also how the Ethiopians and Cushites had had word about that even earlier because Abraham talked to the priest of the Most High God all the way back in Genesis. Unless he was a pre-incarnate Christ, he is a Hamitic king who at that time is the priest of the Most High God. So, Paul said, I would be willing if it would do some good. But Paul realized, I met Jesus on the Damascus Road. I, I'm not him. I'm not him. It's a real hard lesson when you have to give up on a dream. When you see that if black people could just stop competing for the tokens of defeat, if we could just stop fighting for the bottom, 50 million of us because of our combined genius, someone else would have to fill up the permanent underclass. And that's why so much work is done to keep us divided and fighting each other over foolishness. And we keep going up because we don't think we can do any better than those little tokens. And if you believe that you're defeated, you are, and you have a right to your beliefs. The problem comes when you attempt to drag other people down with you. And that's where we're going to have a problem. That's where we're going to have a problem. But for those of you who are on the journey toward freedom and understand it is a constant process and understand that you can walk with anyone who is for your freedom, there's a whole nother video to be done about Confidence, Confidence with Love referenced this. She has a course about it. Um, the historical fact of the matter is, it was not just Black folks who were for Black folks here. Eva Carnell has a point. Uh, we didn't create the situation of our enslavement and Jim Crow, therefore we cannot be 100% responsible for solving it. And if you actually look at your history, there were people involved of all different races and creeds who assisted because it was the right thing to do. They are still out there. Everyone is not for the foolishness of racism. Everybody has never been for that. Now, Muhammad Ali has some good wisdom here. He said, I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know if all white men are racist, but I'm not gonna look spend my time looking for a non-racist one. He's got a point. I'm not saying we just go out there and assume. I'm not saying we spend extra time looking for non-racist white people. They will disclose themselves. You will know them by the fruit they bear. This goes for Asians and Latinos also. I do not say that it is a majority because I don't know that. And the way different institutions behave, I doubt it. But at the same time, understand that people who are for freedom are for freedom for everybody. People who are for freedom for real are for freedom for everybody. And we need not be afraid because again, if you believe you're defeated by all these other people, congratulations, you are. You can be right in your own life. If you believe that you have to move toward freedom and that you can make it, then everybody who's involved on this same journey, because other groups of people have other things to get free from also. We are trying to get to the same place. Now, as a Christian, I have to say, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. If you wanted to be free from the sin patterns that cause you to dig into your ego, pride, malice, and lust, the Lord Jesus Christ can deliver you from that. And I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about you having a real encounter with the shepherd and bishop of your soul, whereby you admit to him that you are a sinner. You recognize that he is the only means of your salvation through his death on the cross for your sins and the only means of your righteousness through his rising from the dead to give that to you. Uh, to The word is impartation to you so that God will accept you. So A, admit. B, believe. See, confess. You, you have to be, uh, when you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you for real, you will let some people know. A, B, C, admit, believe, confess. Once you've done that, you are a Christian. You are a believer, which is the old term, follower of the way. Now that word Christian has gotten tangled up with what imperialist Europeans have done with it, of course, and I understand that. But what I'm talking about is you and the Lord Jesus Christ have a personal relationship whereby he is now your Lord and master. 
And he is going to lead you in the way of love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, patience, meekness, faith, and self-control. This makes it a whole lot easier for you to not be sitting around competing with other people for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That's 1 John, well, 1 Corinthians and then 1 John. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 John chapter 2. It's going to be very hard to be for freedom if you're still competing for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to do that for all people. If you listen to a difference between confidence with love and I, because we're different on this, one of the major distinctions that you're going to hear, uh, she has a much, 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 much dimmer view on the capacity of redemption for certain groups of people. And where she and I agree on this is it's not our problem to save them. But that's the difference. Christ literally will redeem anybody from, out of, it says, out of every tribe and nation. So just because your behavior is demonic as a mass does not mean that Christ is not going to choose some representatives out of there and save them which is why you often hear me say, I'm not a bigot. I know that the Lord Jesus can save anyone, but I also know that most people are not going to really understand how defeated they are in terms of heaven and earth. Really gonna understand that their sin is their main problem. Yes, you, me and all of you listen to me. Your sin is your main problem. Your sin is the cause of your main defeat. And really surrender. Robert E. Lee actually was a Christian. It took him almost 60 years. But that was why he had to go get down on his knees with that black man. Because he basically, what that came down to was, okay, <laughs> I was born uh, a person who was going to inherit slaves. If my father hadn't gone bankrupt, I married into the system. But if I know Christ and he knows Christ and I let him get killed, uh, nope, can't do it. That's why that happened in the end. Eventually, the true relationship with Christ overcame the bigotry. When he surrendered, he said, as Christian gentlemen, we don't have the right to think about what we want. Yes, <laughs> we're, he knew he was likely to get hung. Why it didn't happen is why we have all this trouble we're having with all these neo-Confederates and neo-Nazis today. That's a whole different discussion. But the United States weakness and failure, um, making sure that secessionists hang back then is the same thing we're having trouble with now. Different conversation. Point is, even though he knew it, he also knew that the people that he loved and was out here fighting for were likely to starve to death because marching all over Virginia's farmland meant nobody was growing food. And it had already gone on for three years. And he knew if we get out of April and we don't plant crops, everybody in this region of Virginia will starve. As a Christian, I can't do it. Because eventually what happened was, and it took a long time, Christ broke through the pet sins of Lee's entire society, snatched him up. Mike Pence just dropped his presidential candidacy today. He's about that same age. But one day, the Lord told him, don't just read the Bible. Will you go ahead and read the Constitution and then do what I tell you to do about what it says to do and stop going along with this individual who wants to be dictator for life so he doesn't get 91 indictments. And Mike Pence on one day, like April 9th, 1865 was Lee's day and whatever day that was when that poor older black man came in, it would have been lynched. On January 3rd, Mike Pence found his Christianity and found his courage and said no to President Donald John Trump. And he said, I read my constitution from cover to cover. I can't do it. Reading the constitution helped him. Strength came from Christ. That's why I say Mike Pence is going to end up getting what's called a Robert E. Lee exception. Eventually, given long enough, provided you, you know what passes for democracy in the United States survives, he will be counted among its heroes. Everybody's going to sit up there and talk about the foolishness, the, just like they will with Lee, the foolishness of the previous three years, but on the day that it counted, he got it right. Um, Anton Daniels once said this, that Hitlerian who wants to destroy 4.25 at least million black women with their children. So bring that number up to about eight. Why does God always get the leftovers? 
God does good work with leftovers. The United States of America is still here on behalf of two broken men who had their dreams taken away from them. I know a whole, whole lot of black men. My pastor tells a story about having to be on a park bench homeless when the last woman he was dealing with at that time in his life was like, no, nah, I gotta go. His grandmother put him out, his girlfriend put him out, he was on the park bench. But he remembered when he hit rock bottom and woke up on that park bench in the morning, he heard a bird singing and he realized, he remembered what his grandmother used to sing. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And he said, now, the God that I thought I knew is taking care of these birds. And I have done a mess to myself. But if I humble myself and come to God for real, he'll take care of me. Pastor was defeated, and he knew he was defeated, for real, of a dream that he was going to be this, and he was going to be that, and he was going to do it his way, and he was going to have all the women that he wanted, and he was going to do this, and he was going to do that. Nope, not so much, because he tells the story himself. I can tell it. See, if you believe you're defeated, you are, but if you're defeated because you were believing a lie, and you surrender and repent, then you can make it. And then you can build with those of us who've actually already been through that same process. <laughs> See, as a Christian, I don't come with this idea that some people, just because of who they are, are all good. All Black men are not good. All Black women are not good. All Black men are not bad. And all Black women are not bad. All of us have a nature. Ever since we were little kids and learned how to lie, you know, human beings are basically good. No. Nope. The average two-year-old does not have to be told how to be rebellious because he's learning how to assert that his will is different from yours, just like Adam decided to assert his will against Almighty God, despite the fact that Almighty God knew the trouble he was going to get in. A two-year-old does not have to be taught how to lie to try to stay out of trouble because he does not want to respond to a three-year-old or four-year-old or five-year-old, does not want to respond to a command and make an excuse why he, should he or she should have his way. And we are the same people that we were when we learned how to do that. So you're never going to have me come bring an argument about the superiority of any group of people based on any external characteristic. My having a fifth book out doesn't make me better than any one of you. I'm still human. I still have mess I have to deal with in me. The enemy is in a me too. Um, in her course, uh, Becoming a Self-Confident Woman, the third question is, who is your competition? I have a tremendous amount of trouble with this one right here. This, this one here. This one right here. I have a tremendous amount of trouble with me. That's enough. I have to work hard. The only person who can really defeat me is me. That's my opponent. I don't have to be worried about what you're doing. Yeah, I'm 42 and I'm fat. Yeah. Does that make every 22-year-old who's good looking a threat to me? No. There are 60-year-olds who can outwalk me at this point. Does that make me jealous of them? No. Because what do I have to do? Get up and get my smack done? Does that going to deny me anything that God has for me? No. I've lived long enough to be glad that I was not able to be with any of the men I love. The only tinge of regret I have, but the Lord put it out of reach to the point, Frank, and Sergeant Love. But the Lord put that far enough out of reach so that it was obvious that was not his plan. Sergeant Love is too old and Frank died. Does that still hurt? Yes. But that wasn't God's plan for my life. I was larger then than I am now. I was a little bit younger too. But uh, if you ever look at anything beside OK Cupid for your data, black women tend to get married a little bit later. And by the time they and whoever they marry know themselves and have matured beyond being so worried about. And also the other thing that happens is other races of men by that time usually had their children for the race and are now interested in having someone who is for them. And at that point, and, and if you haven't noticed, we don't age like all other women. We stay cute longer. 
other men notice. So um, middle-aged black women, uh, P the people, Crystal and Carison said this a long time ago, middle-aged black women can win. So I'm not going to be denied anything because of any external characteristics. Now I have to be careful to be doing the things I'm supposed to do. Get my vitamins right, get my walking right. Um, I have been extraordinarily hungry lately, but I probably that big walk up the western side of the hill does dump my metabolism. So I and then there's probably monthly stuff about to happen. So I have to be careful because there's cycles that we go through as we go through different exercise plateaus. But I have to do the things that I know are right. Um, there's no getting around that. But there's no need for me to compete for what is already going to be mine. I'm not defeated. If I wanted a partner, I would put time into finding one. Um, Confidence with Love has a course out there for those of you who want to expand your options. If I was going to the dating field right now, I would take that course to make sure I was on top of it. Because I really did hear what she had to say about how marriage is love and a business and how much she loves her white husband but also that was a business decision for both of them so they both can have the things that they need as they get older and they did not marry in their 20s i am not defeated in anything i have decided i will put my hand to do including writing and launching a book in less than three months. With a newsletter. Comes out Monday, Lord willing. But the book is actually already live. I had to bring it live to make sure it would be live by Monday because, you know, weekends and stuff. It's there. I'll put you, but it doesn't go into free mode until Monday. Uh, so give me 24 more hours. Unless you really want to pay $4.99. But you don't have to. The official launch is Monday. But the point is, that's done, people. All this foolery going on and back and forth. If I was sitting up here listening to black women, black women and black men talk about what I can be. If I were to share with you the, temer the temerity of certain black women and what they have said to me in that same three months. If I were to give you the, I'm 42. If I could give you the things that black women have said to me in the last 14 years, well, 15 years, because I published that first book at age 27. And I listened to the foolery coming from older black women alone to say nothing of all these silly black men. But of course, some of these black men have been silly for so long, they've been deplatformed. And their little friends are on their way. So it's just like you you out here wrapping your gums. You, your stuff you use doesn't even work to keep you on air. How's this going to work? Huh? I don't believe that I'm defeated. In fact, Romans 8 says I'm more than a conqueror because of who I roll with. The captain of the host of the Lord. Uh, so uh, how? Now, there may be some dreams that I have that are based on falsehoods. And I will have to give those up. Those dreams are already dead. I just don't know it yet. It's possible. But I'm rolling with God Almighty, the maker of the universe. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's how the Christian actually rolls. It doesn't matter what your pastor, your deacon, or your favorite online person says. Well, if you don't come to my church, you don't give this much knowledge. Oh, excuse me? Nobody died and made him Jesus either. You got to know where you really stand. I really want y'all to really think about this. Happy Sunday. This isn't officially a sermon, really, but just thought. If you believe you're defeated, you are. If you believe you can be victorious, chances are you can be. If what you're fighting for is true and real. And if there is some dream of yours that has to be deferred and destroyed. Because you find out it was based on a lie. Surrender. The next thing you are to do with righteousness will appear to you. You're not going to be more left out and left behind in a Confederate general 
I mean, that's about as far down as you can go. You're not that bad off. You haven't had 100,000 or 120,000 people killed trying to do the foolery yet. You're not that bad. Not that bad. So just let the stuff go. Let it go. Lord knows. The Lord knows I have cried and I have suffered. And it has been so many times that, it, uh, what is the name of that opera? Boris Gudinov, when he said, I prayed for the comfort of tears. Been there. The last six months have been rough. But I'm not defeated. The, the God I roll with cannot be defeated. So I'm just going to roll with him and keep on winning. And when you are doing what you were called to do, okay, so let's bring this down to general common grace. Uh, and even in the realm of general common grace, if you afford a right of human beings to enjoy their full human rights, fantastic. That's true. We are all entitled to those things. That's going to eventually win out against all this other foolery. It's going to take a while. If you, if you read the Bible to the end, you understand there's going to be some ebbs and there's going to be some flow and there's a world dictatorship out there. We don't know exactly when that's going to be. It's only going to last seven years, but that's going to be kind of rough. So there's going to be an ebb, and there's going to be a flow of freedom, and there's going to be an ebb. But the main thing is be on the right side of it. Be on, And every country goes through these ebb and flows. Be on the right side of it. If you're going to get killed, die for the right reason. As it was said on Deep Space Nine, I can't defeat him. I can only kill it. Be that person. Somebody was talking about uh, Lieutenant Commander Worf on Deep Space Nine, and they were in the hands of the enemies, and the man surrendered. He gave up. He said, I can't actually, and his, his handler said, what do you mean? He said, he keeps getting up. He should be beaten, but Lieutenant Commander Worf, I can't actually defeat him. There will be no satisfaction in it. I can only kill him. If you believe in the right thing, be that person. If you really think it's that bad, be that person. But chances are, we're not there yet. So stand for the right and keep it moving and enjoy moving toward victory. Y'all have a good day now. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, it'll be on the community page in the morning and I'll probably do a video also. Actually, I got a 12 o'clock video on Facebook. I'll probably put that, on, well, yeah. Trying to do these multiple streams. And anyway, <laughs> there'll be a community post in the morning and there will be a video later on in the afternoon. Y'all have a good day now. See you. Well, this is tomorrow. This you'll see Sunday. I'll see you on Monday also. And our aunties is going to be Wednesday or Thursday. Um, Confidence of Love and I are going to be talking about this book and what it means for Black women in particular on either Wednesday or Thursday. We haven't settled down the time yet, but we'll also see you again later this week. All right. And then we eventually we're going to have True Mystique talk about the AI part of the process. And she and I also have to interview each other. So we're we're going to be doing that. That probably looks very distracting. Cross-platform things, not because I'm so wonderful, but because I want you to have an opportunity to be able to not be caught up again, defeated, coming into the market at the wrong time. That Carnell did a video about people doing crypto in 2021 in the middle of the bear, no, 2020 in the summer, in the middle of the end of the bear market, and talk about how they got in scammed. I'm like, well, of course you got scammed. Nobody told you not to try to get in 2023. But that won't be you in 2025. That's the whole point. Y'all have a good day now. Goodbye, and thank you for listening.